Welcome back to New Mali. We're discussing financial and retirement planning. My guests, Lasekha Monaring and Daryl Bennett. If you'd like to email me, my email address is info at anchorcapital.co.za. Send your questions. We're going to move on to some emails now. Our first one to you, Daryl. Robert in Parkview says, how would you calculate what I need given the following scenario? I'm earning, I earn 600000 a year after tax. That's 50000 rand a month. And you have expenses of, say, 40000 a month. Uh, how would you plan my, my thing? Okay, to be honest, there's not enough information. I don't know how old Robert is. I don't know what his time is. He's 40. He's 40, I beg your pardon. But I'm not mentioning that maybe. I don't, know what, I don't know what other assets he's got. I don't know what his debt levels are. I don't know whether he's single, whether he's divorced, whether he's planning on getting married. I don't know if he's got children. I don't know if he's got dependents. As I was saying earlier, one would need to paint the picture and get a little bit more information. It's not a simple answer that he's earning X, he's spending Y, how much must he save? I need uh, a little bit more information, okay. uh, to all be I, fair. Yeah, all I would say to Robert is, Robert, you're gonna, you, 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 whether you marry, whether you've got children, there are three things that you need to have place in retirement. You need to have a home paid for, you need to have good health care problem, you need no debt. Correct. So if you've got 40000 and he's uh, earning 50000 and he's got children, he's got to deduct that expense from his ultimate inflation readjusted earnings he's got to deduct all of his debt he's got to deduct all his savings because when he ultimately retires he's not going to be drawing and saving at the same time so he's absolutely right robert you need to actually sit down but your financial plan as daryl said needs maybe you said next any, co any comments you'd like to make no i agree Before, with yeah. i definitely agree with daryl this mm. is a, so it's different you've got to know everything about Absolutely. but he but he, he, his financial advisor has got to take in all his assets Correct. all his debt how he pays has he got a will in place yeah when last did he update yeah well that's a we now talk about a whole mm. financial yes. plan and, yeah. and you know wills and trusts and all that. I know, Daryl, that's a subject you like to talk about, mm. and we'll see if we can get around to it. I doubt it because we've got so many emails coming in, people who've been waiting to have you on the program. Liseko Philip and Emery says, are the tax savings the same as if I contribute to retirement duty or tax-free saving? Not um, so. Not so. You, they're both tax efficient. So they're very good tax efficient products. They're not exactly the same. So what I would say to Philip is the RA is definitely the retirement annuity is much more tax efficient in that whatever you put into the RA for the tax year, you're able to reduce your tax liability. So for example, if you um, contribute, let's say ten thousand rand, that's one hundred and twenty per annum. At the end of the tax year, whatever liability, so if he's working and he's been paying tax, um, his employer's been deducting taxes, the fact that he's been contributing to a retirement annuity for that year will reduce the tax that he was actually supposed to be paying from his um, salary or bonus or whatever. So the, tax, the RA um, reduces your taxability over and above um, your, your tax-free savings. So tax-free savings, whatever you put into the tax-free savings will not, be, will not uh, um, accrue any tax. You're not going to pay any. There will be no tax liability on the contributions and on the growth itself. So it's also a good savings tool, especially if you're going to use it for a very long time where you're not planning to, to, to withdraw the money. Um, and again, but the, the, the RA, so the, the RA also has a tax benefit in that whatever you contribute in the, in the RA, you're not going to pay any income tax, no capital gains tax, um, no estate planning. So it's, it's a very, they're very good um, um, tools to use for your um, tax planning. And the tax free, the tax free saving comes out all cash tax free. The yeah. retirement annuity, you get the tax deduction going in, but then you've got some, you can only take a third in cash. And now with the two pot system, which we're going to deal with in a moment, yeah. uh, when you come to that, I mean, that's going to have some impact, but you take yes. one third, two thirds pension. Daryl, any comments you'd like yeah. on that question? You're just going to be careful with the tax free saving that if you put more than the 36,000 yes. allocated to what you're allowed every year, then they do put a uh, tax in there. Yeah. So whereas in a retirement fund, you can put more than what you're allowed as a tax deduction. Yeah. Correct. But they complement each other. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I must tell you, I did some calculations. I think the, the, it, take 36,000, you put 36,000 into an investment. It's not tax-free savings. Daryl puts in 36,000. I think at the end of 10 years, you're 20% better off. Mm -hmm because of uh, having not paid any tax. Daryl, Ian in Peter Marysburg says, what is the difference between investing in a retirement annuity and a pension or provident fund? Which is the better one to use? 
Sure. Uh, well, they, they, they're all part of the same family of the Pension Fund Act. The, the retirement annuity, and they've, brought, they've aligned it together now with well, the annuitization. is what you pay individually. It's a the private. The retirement one. annuity you pay individually, where the provident or pension fund, invariably the company would contribute or you would contribute if you're working for a company. But you get the same tax deduction. So whether you're contributing to a retirement annuity or a pension fund or a provident fund, you get the same tax deduction, which is 27.5% of your taxable income capped at 350000 per annum. And that 275 includes all contributions to either pension, provident fund or retirement Correct, yeah. correct. So it's pretty much in alignment. They used to have differences. In the past, a provident fund, you could cash out the whole lot, but they've changed that for people under 55 years old. Um, if he's older than 55 years and he's got vested be benefits in a provident fund, he'd be able to redeem the full 100%. Versus in a retirement annuity or a pension fund, you can only take out a third. Uh, look, all three are great. You know, it, it, and be, be careful, if you're working for a company, often people think they've got a provident fund so that it's enough. It's important to do a review or to do an analysis. You might need to top up extra savings in a retirement annuity to complement your provident. Yeah, because everyone pension. that works for a company says, I've got a pension fund. Yes. But they know, th there's no correlation between what that pension is really worth versus what you're going to need. And now we're going to come to a new co new question. Mm -hmm. And I know we, we could probably spend a whole program, and I, I tell you, we will, for our viewers, we will spend a whole program later in the year, probably around about early August, on uh, the two-pot system, but I, I get questions all the time yeah. about the two-pot system. Mm. So I'm going to ask you, we, we only have, we're only giving you two minutes <laughs> to answer this question. Just share with our viewers the two-pot system, what it actually means in this two-pot system. Sure. So in two minutes, I mean, so I think it's, there's, there's, a, there's a whole reason why they're doing this. I think that's important to understand because I also get clients that are very nervous about, you know, the government doesn't want me to have access to my money. And, and, and the, reality, the truth of the reality is that there are a lot of consumers that are actually, when they leave employment, they cash in all their savings, retirement savings, and come age 50, come 50, 60, then they've got nothing left because they've been changing employers and they haven't been saving. So government, I, I reckon they wanted to put a stop to that so that when you get to, when you resign, so currently when you are a member of employer or pension fund, um, you when you resign, you're allowed to access a, or your whatever it's in your retirement, whether it's a provident pension, you can actually resign and take the whole. Takes the whole because that is called the vested component. Yes. So currently there isn't a distinction, and this is why what's what's going to be changed. So first of September, um, there will be um, changes to what will happen, especially when you come to resignations. So what will happen is that they will allow you while you're working. So this is new contributions. So from the first of September, any contributions you making to your pension fund, retirement fund, um, provident fund, they will allocate a third of your contribu of your savings into what they would call a vested pot. So the vested pot simply means it's the uh, pot that you're allowed to access um, while you're working and even when you resign. So they w they've put a cap to it, but I think that's the first thing to understand that they will cap of your contributions, how much you're allowed to access before um, retirement, during um, your working, and also at retirement, how, you, how much you can access and catch. The balance, which is about two thirds of your contributions, will go into the pot where it's, you're not going to be able to access it. Uh, when I say not able to exit, I mean you're not going to be able to withdraw the full amount when you leave your employer, when you are during your employer. The, the big thing I think it's, um, so what it means is that um, consumers will actually be guaranteed a portion when they retire, especially at age 60, age, uh, retirement age, you are guaranteed a portion of your contributions that you wouldn't have been allowed to access. The main um, advantage, which I think is good, is that some um, consumers will be allowed to withdraw while they're still working. So currently, especially in the uh, state, in the government side, a lot of, for example, teachers would resign just to access their pension funds and then go back into the system. The problem is that sometimes they, ca they cash in the whole amount. Meanwhile, they only need a few 50,000 or sp small amounts of money. So they, then the new um, two part will kind of allow you some access to funds to, to help you in desperate need of cash. Liseka, I haven't been fair to you yeah. because really it's, it's a much deep. bigger question. Yeah. 
uh, the Daryl, the question is, if you are, do withdraw, you're going to pay whatever you borrow. You can borrow up to 30000 on a one-off. Yes. So 10% capped at 30000 30000 correct. But it's taxed at marginal rates. Yes. People don't realize that. Yes. Marginal rates mean it will be added to your taxable income and you'll pay at the high bracket. Correct. And you could be paying anything between 30 to 45%. Look, it's, we didn't do justice to this particular question. And please, you need to talk to your financial advisor, your pension advisor. You need to understand what it means, not only in terms of tax, but you also need to understand what it means in terms of withdrawing these funds and then what it, what the impact is at retirement. Because yeah. you could lose 20 years of growth on you know you, you know yeah. over those situations. Yeah. But you know, Old Mutual have estimated that in excess of one million people are going to withdraw to thirty thousand rand, and they kill, and the, and SARS have estimated five to six billion in tax. So you need to be very careful about that. I'm going to take one more email, which I'm going to give you to Leseka before we go. It says, I've recently graduate, graduated as an accountant. What type of disability should I be looking at? So disability, I mean, look, you definitely want to protect the income, especially if you're a recently graduate. You've got a high income and earning potential. Um, so I always say to my clients, look at what's currently being offered in your, in, in your employment. So the simple rule is that you want to cover, you want to be able, in the event of a disability, whether it's an impairment or something severe, you want to cover, at least be able to afford the, the things that you're able to afford now based on your income and obviously with what you would have what you would have earned over time. So what that means is that you get um, usually some of the, the insurance will give you about 75% of your earnings as an income protection. So there's two main benefits. You can get an income, a monthly income um, insurance that will pay out in the event of disability, and that's usually 75%. But as a graduate, you can actually get up to 100% of your earnings that you can insure if anything wants to happen to you. The other big benefit is a lump sum benefit. So usually I would say your lump sum disability benefit should cover the big stuff. So if you are a graduate, it's paying off your mortgage, paying off a house, fixing, um, getting the capital that you need to get your house in order. So again, it's not a thumb suck. I would actually look at what is going on in the client's life, uh, what is their debt, what is the income that they need to survive, and between what she has in, in, in her employer and what the shortfall is, she can take out an additional cover to cover if there is a shortfall for to prepare for her finances. Daryl, I'm, I'm, I'm going to allow you, and I'm not going to do a closing tonight, so I'm going to allow you the next 30 seconds. Are people underinsured on disability? Absolutely. Definitely underinsured. And they're underinsured on life insurance. And uh, y y they need to look at it on an annual basis at least because their circumstances have changed. And they need to find the balance, Brian, of how much they're going to put in towards their retirement and what they need for income protection. And they might need to complement their income protection or their income requirements if they get disabled with their retirement funds. Because the flip side is you're putting all this money into disability and you've got no money left for your retirement. So it's finding the balance. Well, please, if you want to get hold of Daryl Loseko, you can call, send me a note at info at anchorcapital.co.today and I'll put you in touch with both of them. I'd like to thank both of you for joining me this evening. It's important to note our program is to provide information and should not be excused as advice. Next week's program, we'll once again be dealing with estate planning and if you need to get hold of me, my details will appear on the screen. I'd like to thank you for watching. Good night.